Welcome back. We're going to be still talking about area under the curve. We're just going to look at it a little bit more in depth, a little bit different. Okay? So I kind of have this example up here, and this new vocab here is called a Riemann sum. A Riemann sum, instead of, or what it is, is it's just adding up all of our rectangles. Okay? If you remember the summation notation from Math 3, Precalculus, 1060, whatever, wherever you learned it, this sign here means sum. And what this is doing, this is our function at any given value. So these are our x values. This is the height of each of our rectangles. And then this delta x, that's our change in x, that's the base of our rectangles, and we're multiplying those together. So height times base, that's one rectangle, and we're starting from our first x value to our nth value. We're going to add those together, and that's creating the area under the curve. So it's just notation for saying take all of our rectangles, and we're going to add them up. So instead of saying upper and lower sums, we're now going to just change it to a left-sided sum or a right-sided sum. And we'll work through that with this example over here. But for this visual, I'm going to go ahead and go with a left-sided sum. And if we notice, some of our rectangles are going above and some of our rectangles are going below. But with that, we're going to get some extra area and we're losing some area. So it kind of evens out as that curve changes, concavity, increase, decrease, all sorts of different things, okay? But what we notice here is I'm able to make more rectangles because I'm not forced to stay above or below. It doesn't matter. I could come in and make half or twice as many rectangles. Okay. As I do this, what's happening is the more and more rectangles I use, the more and more accurate my estimation is going to be. So what we're going to do with that is if we look at this guy, like I said, I'm going from my first rectangle to my nth rectangle. Well, what happens if the amount of rectangles I have approaches infinity? So if I take the limit as n approaches infinity of this function, adding up all of my rectangles together, there's a different way that we can write this. So as I'm dealing with an infinite amount of rectangles, I mean, just picture each little sliver is its own rectangle, how am I going to show that? Mathematically, this is our integral. So the integral from a to b of whatever our function is, dx. So what this is saying, we're going to, this guy, we're going to add all the rectangles on the interval from a to b, from a to b. This is still giving us our height of our rectangle. And this is still giving us our base. Height times base, there's the area of our rectangles. We're going to add them up from A to B. That's all it is. Okay? So I've got an example set up here. We're going to estimate this using our x squared. No, x squared is my function. We're going to use this using our Riemann sums. So like I said, instead of going upper and lower, we're now going to do what is called a left-sided, and it's called a rectangle, left-sided rectangle approximation method. Woo! Lots of words. A left-sided rectangle approximation method. We're going to call this LRAM. L R A M. L RAM, left side 
rectangle approximation. What that means is I'm just going to worry about the left-sided heights of my rectangles. So if I come in here, starting from the left side, I'm going to create this first rectangle. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a height because we're basing it off of that zero. It has a base of one, height of zero. The second rectangle has a base of one and a height of one. My third rectangle has a base of one and a height of four because this is at x equals two. So I'll fill those in because we're going from one to three. Oh, wait a second. I just set myself up for awkwardness. Right here, we don't even need this rectangle. And the reason why is because we're finding the area just from one to three. One to three. So that means I only have these two rectangles right now. So I have one plus four. And that's going to give me an area of five. So if I come in and I do a R ram, which is a right-sided rectangle approximation me method, R ram, we're going to start from the right side of our graph. So I'm coming in to the right side, and I'm going to build this rectangle. And yeah, it goes all the way down. I just try not to mix markers. So we have a base of 1 and a height of 9. And my second rectangle has a base of 1 and a height of 4. So 9 plus 4, we get 13. So I can see here that my lower end is approximating 5. My upper end is estimating 13. So somehow in there, we're going to see um, our real area under the curve. It's between 5 and 13. Real quick, just a little note to end on. If I were to create more rectangles, we're going to see a more accurate area. So here I split them up just into two because that was easy from one to three. But what happens if I split it up into four equal rectangles? So that means I'm going to come in and I'm going to use these guys. So my LRAM, now my rectangles are built off of one, one and a half, two, and two and a half. So now we're filling in some more of that gap. We're going to get a more accurate answer. Now our base is one half. My first height is one. My second height is based off of this three halves right here. So if I plug that into my function, three halves, if I square that, I'm going to get nine fourths. One half, plug in two, I get my four. And one half, I'm going to plug in, this one is five halves, so I'm going to get 25 over four. And that's going to give me a more accurate estimation. Again, this is my LRAM. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you an RAM real fast. So the right-sided approximation, we're still going to have this base of 1 half, but now I'm going to base it off of the right-sided height. So I'm going to still have that 1 half. Now it's 9. 1 half. Now I'm basing it off of my 5 halves here, which has a height of 25 fourths. One half, we're going to base it off of our two here. So it has a height of four. And then one half from our three halves, we get a height of nine fourths. So what we're seeing here is I'm starting with the right side, and then I'm dropping off that last value at one. On the LRAM, I'm starting at one, and I'm just not including that last value at nine. Here we're going to see more accurate estimations of the true area under the curve. Okay, so good luck, LRAM, RAM, using that to estimate our integral.